Hi, I'm Inger Anderson, and I'm really pleased to make this recording on the imperatives of infrastructure and the Sustainable Infrastructure Platform, which is a platform that we at UNEP established together with partners in uh, 2018, and really aims to support infrastructure planning and development, but in a sustainable setting. And because infrastructure really is central to the SDGs, um, we understand, obviously, access to water, access to safe housing, access to transport, um, access to energy. All of these are essential for meeting the SDGs and for combating uh, poverty. But we also know that in the very construction of infrastructure, um, we can have a negative impact. But we must meet the infrastructure gap for those areas where we have uh, that very large gap because we understand very much that lack of infrastructure, absence of infrastructure depresses growth, prolongs poverty and holds up the achievement of the SDGs. So on the one hand, infrastructure is absolutely critical, done less optimally and wrong, uh, it can negatively uh, arrest uh, our hope to achieve the SDGs. So as environmentalists, therefore, we need a very sophisticated understanding of infrastructure and an analysis of infrastructure economics, the options and the linkages and the impacts. And so by doing infrastructure right, however, we can make it sustainable, we can minimize its footprint, at times even make it nature positive. We can integrate nature into the design of infrastructure and we can ensure that minimal design technologies and minimal ecosystem disruption and destruction is incorporated. But the good news is that the world is waking up and understanding the fact that infrastructure matters and that we need to flip that and pivot it towards sustainability because we can no longer continue in the business as usual construct. In fact, we build in terms of footprint, the equivalent of one Paris a week. That's the amount of new structures that we are putting down globally. And in many economies, we see badly planned, ill-conceived, poorly constructed um, systemic um, um, uh, infrastructure that is causing ecological disruption, massive CO2 emissions and create deep scars and fragmentation in the landscape. And that's clearly not what we want. The IPBES report of uh, last year the, uh, tells us that if we get this right, we can really do uh, positive impacts. But it also notes that um, nature is declining at unprecedented rate with very grave uh, impacts for people. Uh, and the main drivers is obviously changes in land use, um, uh, fragmentation, as well as sea use, um, and direct exploitation of organism and climate change pollution, etc. But it is this fragmentation element that becomes very relevant when we are speaking about infrastructure. We've already, we, humanity, have already changed and altered 75% of the land of our planet and 41% of species, for example, in the UK are in decline. And lots of this is because of our chipping away at nature and nature's infrastructure. And of course, the remote spaces, the wild spaces, we have to keep them wild um, because it is when we disrupt ecosystems, when we erode ecosystems, um, that we create uh, more havoc, including obviously zoonotic diseases. Um, so it is critical that we address uh, infrastructure in the right way and that we address ecosystem management and stewardship in the right way. But we will create more infrastructure as humanity expands and we need therefore to make it sustainable because we cannot keep expanding uh, infrastructure into the natural world. And OECD estimates at about 6.9 trillion uh, uh, dollars to be invested in infrastructure every year. And so infrastructure is something that we are doing and expanding clearly. So as we environmentalists step into that field, it's very important that we keep a few uh, principles clear. First of all, we can't sort of greenwash infrastructure. We can't pretend that it is greener than it is. 
Um, so the greening of infrastructure is not done by adding words. It's done by smart design. It's not done, for example, by reclassifying coal as clean coal or as ultra supercritical, uh, even when stringent SO2 flue gas regulations are in place we need to actually move to renewables, end of. So the greening doesn't work and doesn't cut it uh, unless it is meaningfully pivoting and shifting into what is truly sustainable. Nature-based solutions, investing in nature's infrastructure, can provide important solutions as well. It provides resilience. Those sand dunes, those mangroves, those coastal forests, etc., provides protection to coastal communities. Wetlands provides the sponge effect in high rainfall and prevents inundation. And of course, we can store carbon as well and build up our biodiversity. So there we have massive opportunities to invest in nature's infrastructure, nature-based solutions, um, that can have these multiple benefits to people, to planet, to climate, and to biodiversity. And on the urban side, let's think about investing in the urban setting, for sure, on the climate dimensions, ensuring low emissions, highly efficient um, building and infrastructure, but also permeable, ro permeable roads so that uh, and surfaces so that water can recharge our aquifers and also bringing biodiversity into our design, not just green roofs and green parks, etc., which is always welcome, don't get me wrong, but we also need to think about the very footprint and the densification of cities, avoiding the sprawl unnecessarily. And on the transport climate side, it's obvious, investing um, in uh, the public transport, um, but just celebrating a few uh, biodiesel or electric buses or new railways is not enough. We need to invest in R&D. We need to invest in serious public transport, in zero emission vehicles, in smart network designs that avoid that fragmentation of ecosystems so that we can integrate nature into and with our transport systems. So the bottom line is that we cannot achieve the SDGs without meeting the infrastructure gap but we can meet the infrastructure gap wrongly and not achieve the SDGs. So we need the best of science and the best policies, the best knowledge and the best tools to deliver. And we need to ensure that all countries adhere to the protocols and conventions to which they have signed up, the Paris Agreement, the Biodiversity Convention, the Rights of Indigenous People, and of course the Chemical and Waste Conventions, so that we have a level playing field and so that as we meet the infrastructure gap, as we ensure that those who live in energy poverty without access to sanitation and water, without uh, mobility and transport, that they get the, uh, that access. But we do so making those investments through the sustainability lens. If we do that, we can get the SDGs on all fronts. And that's what we need to do. Thank you. And I very much look forward to hearing about the outcomes of your important work.